everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the second episode of the series which is Salesforce Flows, Permission, Context and Debugging. In this video, we'll be covering all the common issues that you may face while developing and running your flows. Let's just face it, flows can be complex. This can contain a lot of moving parts and connect with nearly every aspect of flow in some way. Even the simplest of flows can cause error if it is not developed keeping all the other aspects of Salesforce in your mind, right? We will cover all of these issues in this video and how we can actually prevent them. Now, what are we going to discuss actually in this video? We'll be talking about all three major areas, which is giving user permission to run flows, granting the right permission for their flows to work. And the third one is most important, which is understanding flows context and how it actually affects flows behavior. Now, without wasting any time, Let's start the video. Let's start with the first point that we have, which is giving users permission to run flows. Now, there's a myth a lot of developers has, which I'm going to break today. Deploying your flow at a place. Please listen to me carefully. Deploying a flow at a place where users can access it doesn't really mean that your users can run the flow as well. Okay. To run the flow, we have to give users certain permissions, right? What are the permissions? Permissions are the flow user permission on the user record or the run flow permission on their profiles and permission set. We will learn about it, how we can provide these permissions for the user to actually run the flow instead of just accessing it. Okay. But before that, remember only admins with managed flow permissions can access the inactive flow. Every other active flow can be managed and can be access by all the users depending on the permissions. Now let's dive straight into our Salesforce org to learn about these users permission and how we can grant it to prevent the permissions error. Okay. Okay. Now this is my Salesforce org. Let me just tell you where are these two permissions. Okay. One permission is uh, displayed on the user record. Let's go to the user here. So I have these few users here. Let's go to the support agent user. Now on user record, we have a permission, which is flow user here. You can see either you need to have this checked on the user record, or if you want to give access on profile or permission set level, let's say for this user, we are having this custom support profile. Okay. Now in this profile, if you will go and search for run flows, there's a permission which says run flows. There's a checkbox, which is unchecked for now, right? Either you give the user this permission check or either you give the profile this permission. Either of the permissions can work depending on if you want to provide a specific user to run the flow permission. And if you want to provide a group of users by uh, directly adding them to a profile or permission set or assign this run flows. Okay. Let me just tell you how it will work. Actually, there's a flow that I have, which is close case and task. I have created it. Now let's just go to debug. Let's run as another user and I will choose support agent, which is this user who does not have the run flow permission. Even if support agents can actually access the flow, which I told you before, but that doesn't mean that they can run the flow. Let me just show you here. We need a case ID for which I've selected this case. Let me just add the case ID here and we will run the flow. See what it says. You tried to run the flow as a user who doesn't have the required permissions and access to run the flow. So that is what I was saying. Even if you have deployed a flow at a place where your users can access it, doesn't really mean that your users can run the flow. Okay. Now to run the flow, what we can do, let's do the first permission and let me show you how we can do the permission from here. Let's check this and save this. Now this permission will only work for this user because of course we have assigned it to only this user. Let's debug it again, choose the same user and run. Now the flow runs successfully here. You can see flow interview finished because we have given the user a uh, permission to run the flow, right? Now, let me just show you how the permission will work on profile level. The permission will work same as this permission, just that on profile level, you can assign the permission to a group of user rather than individually providing the permission to the users. Okay. Now let's edit this profile and click run flows and save it. Now also this should work as expected. This is save. Let's go here, debug again with this user and click on run. 
Again, you see the flow ran as expected. It says interview was finished. That means the user was able to run the flow. So this is the difference between users accessing the flow and users had the power to run the flow. Okay. Now let's jump into the second point, which is giving flow the right permission. Now that users can run the flow, let's talk about the permission the flow themselves need. It's easy to forget that Salesforce object and field permissions still apply even if we have an automation running, right? If a user doesn't have the right access, the flow will fail. To be honest, when creating a flow, it's easy to get caught up with things like what the flow needs to be done and what uh, elements we want to put in that flow, right? For example, get this record, update that record, send email to this user, post chat a message and everything, right? But it's important to remember that Salesforce permissions, as I said, still apply. For example, if my flow uh, creates an opportunity and a user that I'm using to run the flow has the access to run the flow, but doesn't have the permission to create an opportunity, right? Or to edit an opportunity, the flow will eventually fail, correct? Let's take a look at the example of how we can actually plan the flow and its permissions to avoid this fail, right? Whenever we have a requirement to create a flow, let's just think about these three important topics. Who will run the flow? In our case, what are we going to do is we are going to create cases for context, okay? So who will create the case? Support department users will create a case. So they will need create case permission, for example, right? Now, the second question will be when the flow will run. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this flow to a lightning record page uh, with a button and on that button, it will be triggered. So when will the flow run? It will be embedded in a lightning page and it will be triggered when we will click on that button, right? Now, the third and the most important one, what data is actually needed to get that flow running successfully with the users, right? So for example, if you want to create cases in that flow, if you want to update case fields in that flow, right? So then we need create case uh, permissions. We need permissions to a certain fields, which will be used in that create case element, right? So those are the things we have to keep in mind when we are creating a flow. And even if before we can create a flow, if you ask these questions to yourself, and if needed to your business or to your senior, it will be really, really great. Now we are in our Salesforce org. Let me give you an example of what we have discussed before on giving the user right permissions of Salesforce objects and fields as well. When we give them permission to run flows, right? Now the support agent profile has the permission to run flows. They can run and access every flow that is active. Correct. Now, uh, we have this flow already there. Let me just uh, give you an overview of what I did. Now, this is the support profile. And uh, on case, this is the case object fields. Now, on case, there's a feed stop on which this profile doesn't have read or edit access to. And in our flow, when we update our case, when we close our case, I have added is stopped equals to true condition. Okay. Because I am a system admin and I have that permission, I was able to add this condition. But when I run the flow and when I debug the flow with that user, basically to show you what will happen when that user will run the flow. Let's run the flow as another user and I will sub uh, select support agent and I will add the case ID. This is just to show you what happens when the user doesn't have the uh, actual Salesforce object and field permission, even if they have the run flow permissions. Okay. Now let's just run it and you will see it fail. And the reason here is that no such column is stopped on entity key. What happens is if you will see this error and if you're an admin, you will think why it is showing that there is a field as is stopped. This shouldn't happen and everything else, right? But what happens is for user that is running the flow doesn't have access to a particular field. Because of the Salesforce security, the field level security, the field name is also not visible to the user here. So if this error says that there's no field is stopped on the entity case, that means because the field level security hides it from the user, right? So the user cannot actually know that there is a field uh, with the API name is stopped, right? Now let's go back to the user's profile from here. The profile was support agent profile, sorry, custom 
कस्टम सपोर्ट प्रोफाइल राइट नाउ इफ यू गो टू देश फील सिक्योरिटी हियर यू कैन सी दैट दी स्टॉप फील्ड विच इज अ चेक बॉक्स डजेंट हैव एक्सेस टू दिस प्रोफाइल सॉरी द प्रोफाइल डजेंट हैव एक्सेस टू दिस फील्ड now let's just edit this that is why it is important to give object level and field level uh, access to the user now here is the stop check box we will just check it and save it right so that is why before creating the flow before implementing the flow for any of the users or the profiles it is important for you to take a step back sit down and note it down anywhere in your notepad or in your documents that what permissions are actually needed uh for the flow to run successfully it can be a flow permission it can be a user permission it can be a salesforce object and field permissions as well right now just go to this case this flow and run it again for the same case and this should work see this is completed because we have given the stop field permission to the user it was able to update the case and it was able to update the task as well right so that is why it is very very important to provide the Salesforce permissions as well as the flow permissions. Okay, now comes the third point, which is understanding a flow's context. This is very very important. Please take notes of it. Please search on it on Google as well. Uh, you can search on it on Salesforce Help. You can search on it on Detail. Right. You have to understand the flow's context, enable to run the flow successfully, enable to be a better tester, enable to be a better developer. Right. Now let me put it in an example. For example, screen flows often requires object and field accesses, right? But not all flows requires those kind of access. For example, record trigger flows don't worry about users permissions, right? This is because the screen flows and record trigger operates with different context, okay? Let's come back to our flows context and how it works as sharing, okay? The first is user context. the flow accesses objects and records that the running users has access to for example if you have only read access to the case record the flow can only read the case and not update it or not create any case right now the second one comes is system context with sharing the flow can access all the objects and fields but respects the users record sharing settings okay this is the same example of with sharing where the sharing rules comes as in full effect okay now the third one is system context without sharing the flow has full access to all the records and objects and they will completely uh, ignore the sharing settings and the sharing rules okay let me show you a live example using the previous example that we have used for system agent users to access that flow to let you understand how you can change flow's context while debugging or running your flows and how you can take advantage of it okay now here is the custom support profile and from here i will just remove the uh stop field access again so that it should not work right now according to the situation now i will tell you how we can make it work let me just show you that it will not work now because uh, we have removed the uh, permissions see this will not work because it will again say that it stop is not an entity in case right now let us edit the flow go to the settings here click on show advanced now this is what we are talking about this is what we are discussing flows context one is user or system context if this is selected then it depends on how the flow is launched like this is the basic default setting which means that all the access that user has the flow will have the same access okay now we have system context with sharing which enforces record level x with all the accesses that user has it also uh takes care of the record level access that the user has okay so this one make sure that along with the uh, object and field level access of the user this will take care of the record level access that the user has as well okay now we have the third one this is the hero but this can be a culprit as well you have to really uh, be careful when using this one because this one is in full power this one is same as that you are giving access to all your salesforce data there is a reason that these uh points are hidden in the advanced setting because this is not for the usual users who are creating the flow this is for the advanced users who wants to go beyond the flow basics and create something new create something innovative and maybe debug the flow in different ways in different contexts to understand when the flow can break and they can then uh repair the flow right now let me just show you 
how powerful and how dangerous this tool is. Now I have selected system context without sharing, which means access all data. Let's just click on done. I will save it. And I will debug the flow again with the same user and let me show you what happens. Let's just run the flow with other user, system agent, take the same case, case ID and run. You see the flow runs successfully. It was completed. But wait, did I provide the permission to the uh, profile? No, I did not. In the profile, the permission is not there. But still, I was able to bypass that uh, validation and I was able to access the uh, stop field, right? This is how powerful this feature is. This is how powerful uh, contexts are. That is why it is hidden in the advanced settings, right? But this is a very powerful tool. If you want to debug something, if you are a user, you don't have access to a field, but you have created this flow for the users who has access to the field. Okay. It is not necessary for you to give yourself or your profile access to the particular field. Instead, you can use the flow context without sharing and you can debug the flow to check that your flow is working fine. There's no errors to be found. And then you can deploy the flow and the users uh, who are expected to use this flow will have the permission to a stop field or any other field that is used in this flow and you're sorted right this tool is very very important and very uh, essential in the part of debugging in the part of testing the flows and make it robust but you have to be careful you need to remove this permission as soon as your work is done you need to make it user contact so that it can follow the user's access or it can follow the user's record level access. Now, one more point that we have already covered in our previous scenarios and examples, but just want to point it out that even if you have created the flow and tested it with your user and with system user, it is important to debug the flows as another user because the flows has been created for different specific users and profiles. For whichever profile you are creating a flow, you have to test with one of the profile users to make sure that no error happens when the profile users are trying to debug the flow. Okay, that's it for today's video. I hope you found this useful. I'll see you super soon in the next video with a new episode of the series. Till then, bye-bye, take care and keep learning.